It was my senior year. By this time, I had been burnt out of school. Well, to be honest with you, I got burnt out around my second day of freshman year, but for dramatic purposes. During my years of modern musical education, I would spend hours practicing in my cold, dark practice room. Alone. On weekends and even weekdays, I would play local jazz clubs where I would get home at 4 o'clock in the morning only to be woken up 4 hours later for 8 a.m. music theory classes. Oh. By the time my senior year came around, I was ready to leave the shelter and comfortability of my college campus and move out into the real world to do the very thing I had always dreamed of doing. Becoming a pro jazz me musician. But there is only one thing stopping me from doing that. My senior recital. So I posted this clip on YouTube of me just playing a little drum solo on my senior recital, just having a good time with the homies. Because obviously, if the audience sees you having a good time, then they'll probably have a good time too. It got 3 million views. What the? And as you can see by the title, I thought I had completely failed the senior recital because I was having too much of a good time. I'm not gonna lie. But it turns out it actually wasn't that bad at all. I mean, my professor was the guy holding the camera and he thought it was hilarious. <laughs> but the main lesson I got that day was after the show. True story, one of my friends walked up to me after the show and he said, Zach, I could hear your personality through your playing. In my mind, it was like, <laughs> because to me, that's what jazz or improvisation in any form of music is about. Let's just take Miles Davis, for example. And dear God, I'm not comparing myself to Miles Davis. Don't be tripping. Everybody knew that Miles was the coolest mother And you can hear that in his playing. I remember when I was younger, I was watching this Miles Davis interview. The person interviewing him was asking him, yo, Miles, like, what's up with all, why are you buying all these hookers? And you know, Miles, he was like, man, I ain't buy no hookers. The girls come to my room and pay me to take them out. <laughs> and of course, young Zach, you know, I'm just like, oh, I'll make sure I find that and put the link in the description. Now, going back to me, and again, I'm not comparing myself to Miles Davis or any other legend. I've always been a goofy guy, and I'll admit, sometimes I don't take things as seriously as most things should be taken. But since this was my recital, I was the only one getting graded for it. I was with my homies, all of my friends and family with the audience. We were just joking around with each other before the show. It was a good time. So naturally, I figured, you know what, let's, let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. There's also been hundreds of questions of people just asking, what the hell is going on here, brother? I've also accidentally seemed to piss off a small group of people that I like to call the internet scholars of music in my YouTube comments. Because according to them, in no shade, you can't have fun in music. You have to be serious all the time. But at the same time, I'm gonna say this. Don't try this with a band. I don't wanna see you get fired. Unless it's your group and you're the one handing out the checks at the end of the night, you know, then. Do whatever. But if you're playing with a band for the first time and you start slowing down the speed really bad, <laughs> don't do it. But for now, I'll answer some of the most common questions I get from this particular video. What was the conversation like after this incident? Well, there wasn't really a, a conversation after. We just all went to IHOP and then after that, we hung out with a bunch of girls and had a good time. Were you apologizing to the crew for what you did or for the drum set for what you were about to do? I was apologizing to my boys because in rehearsal, I played something similar to what I did in the video and they were like, nah, Zach, just stay away from that, whatever you do. But obviously, you know, but nobody was offended or embarrassed. I mean, you can talk to Nathan, my little brother, also known as Saxologic. He was one of the saxophonists in that video and he thought it was funny. Who's the man laughing behind the camera? Well, at my university, I had to take drum lessons every single semester under a guy named Dan Davis, and that guy kicked my ass. He was my drum professor, my drum guru. He was actually the one holding the camera, and that night he sent me the video, he was like, dude, I got your drum solo, LOL. What song is this? Please answer, I'm begging. This is actually an arrangement I wrote for the song called Nardis. Nardis. 
obviously it was the closing song of the night and I had to, you know, I wanted to make it big sounding, you know, like, uh. <laughs> And I just love that tune, Nardis. So what better way to close the set than play an arrangement of one of my favorite standards? Bro! What the fuck is that out of time you but so incredibly on kind of groove called? Well, Jake, you, I have no idea what to call it. And I'll show you why it's actually not incredible at all. Let's hop on the drums. Welcome to my drum set. So check it out. Something that I always tell my students, I always preach this, practice with a metronome. I mean, come on, you're not a little kid anymore. You got to learn how to play with a metronome, okay? Grow up. Although it might seem like a chore now, in the future, it will set you free, baby. The reason why I say it'll set you free is because once you start to internalize tempos, you yourself will have the musical freedom to do whatever you want. So in this instance, my bandmates were playing a rhythm, right? Degada, degada, we'll call out the vamp. While they were playing the vamp, they were actually acting as my timekeeper or my metronome. So the roles were reversed, you see? They were the drummers and I was the soloist. So I was able to be as free as I want. I could slow down, I could speed up, I could play whatever I wanted, but because I had them, the, my metronome, the vamp, I could hear where all the quarters would be because they would they would play this, right? Da -ga -da, da -ga -da. Da -ga -da, da -ga -da. Basically, I can play it whatever the hell I want. I can slow down the groove, I can speed it up, I can do whatever. As long as the band, they're acting as the metronome or the timekeepers, they're playing that vamp, I know where one is gonna be, right? As you just saw there, I just slowed down the tempo. I didn't do any crazy metric modulation thing. I just simply slowed down what I was playing because I felt like it. Well guys, that's all I have for today. Honestly, it's getting very late and I have not played Apex at all today. But a quick thing I just wanna say, thank you so much for the amazing support. We're creeping up on 200,000 subscribers. What? Ooh. Thank you so much for watching my videos and checking out the videos and, and liking the videos. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. If you're not new here and you haven't subscribed or liked the video, then... <laughs> GROW UP! Mwah.